Hey, nurse community, welcome back. It's me, Nikki. I am a health equity education coach. And what that means is I help academic nurse leaders to bypass the trial and error of making mistakes in talking about health equity and DEI with their students so that these nurses can really be prepared for the rigor of practice. I love what I do. In doing this, I did a webinar for the ANA on overcoming obstacles to a successful DEI program, key actions all nurse leaders can take now. And I got a wealth of questions that were asked of me. And I'm taking some time to answer those questions that we just couldn't get to in the webinar. So here's our question for today. How do you establish a successful DEI program when staff are not aware of or they're resistant to the change or they feel like their opinions just don't matter? What a great question. It can be really, really difficult and daunting, especially when you feel like your feelings and your opinions don't matter or when you have staff who are resistant to change. But what we know, especially if you watch the webinar that I did, is that this has to be integrated into organizational culture and organizational structure. So here are a couple of ways that you can begin to embed this process of health equity into your organizational structure. You wanna establish a clear vision, a vision that's compelling, that people can get behind, that they understand, which means that you have to ask the people in the organization what really matters to them. Active listening is a huge part of feeling heard, feeling respected and feeling understood. Even if the opinions that people are expressing differ from some of the goals that you have for health equity, allowing those opinions to be voiced is very critical for people to feel like they're engaged in the process. Also, you wanna have a diverse representative team. It really does matter who's at the table. So do we have ethnic diversity, gender diversity, ability, uh, diversity, what kinds of things are we seeing and acknowledging for people in these spaces and places? And then one of the hardest but most critically important factors is to engage in clear and open dialogue. When there are problems and issues, don't sweep them under the rug and act as if they aren't happening and as if they don't matter. Make sure that you're addressing those things with staff because even small things, what we call microaggressions become really large things and a thousand paper cuts can still really make you feel horrible. So understand and recognize that this is an ongoing challenge, that people are always going to have issues that they feel are not necessarily addressed, but do your best to establish those clear goals, make it compelling, make it easy to follow, increase representation in your organizations, and then also make sure that you're engaging in open dialogue. Follow me on LinkedIn and YouTube for more great information. Check out my webinar here if you want to know more about what I talked about. Thanks so much. Have a great day.